The IMF and the G20 are currently cracking down on all crypto assets, which means that your XRP, HBAR, ICP holdings, whatever you have in your wallet right now, is not as safe as you think it is, especially considering nobody's really talking about the massive moves they're making in crypto regulation and how they're talking about cryptocurrency as well. You see, these people are not your friends, and today I'm going to cover and talk about exactly what they're saying, how they're trying to regulate the markets and change all of our crypto assets today so hit that like button and let's get into it so in case you don't know what the imf is it stands for the international monetary fund and what they're working to achieve in their own words is sustainable growth and prosperity for all of their members and there's over 190 member countries in the imf as of right now and it's likely that more and more countries will continue to join this massive alliance in the future. Now, the question we should be asking is, why are all of these countries part of the IMF? And well, in short, it's because the IMF supports their native currencies and helps all of these countries sustainably grow their economy. But there is one key issue. They are doing this at the cost of their citizens in many cases. And they are doing this with the centralized fiat money system. And this is where things get very interesting. Because you see, the IMF has recently had a number of different speeches in regards to how crypto regulation is going to look in the future for all of these countries and well they're putting all of their cards on the table they're really describing exactly what they want to do and well essentially what they're saying right now is crypto assets have implications for macroeconomic and financial stability that are mutually interactive and reinforcing Therefore, a comprehensive policy and regulatory response is necessary to address the risks of crypto assets. So the question we should be asking is, what risks do they really see from crypto assets? What is the issue with cryptocurrency? Now, it's, the issue is actually very clear and they go into more details right here. So they, they say as follows, while crypto markets do not currently pose a risk to financial stability in most jurisdictions, adoption of crypto assets tends to be higher in emerging markets and low income jurisdictions. Now, I want to highlight low income jurisdictions because this is a very important point. The reason why poor countries will adopt cryptocurrency instead of their native currency is because it allows them to escape the monetary system that they exist within, which is built to oppress them. Now, a couple prime examples is Venezuela, South Africa. And, and, and many others. These countries essentially print trillions of dollars like we saw in Zimbabwe where they quite literally have trillion dollar bills and it completely devalues the currency for every single working class person and it's completely outside of their control. So of course these low income jurisdictions are going to get cryptocurrency instead of the Venezuelan dollar. I mean that's just I mean common sense. Anyone with a brain would do so. But you can see they don't really highlight this issue and talk about the benefits of cryptocurrency instead they're very focused on just the negatives they say widespread crypto adoption in assets in these countries could undermine the effectiveness of monetary policy so they're essentially saying that cryptocurrency is taking away from their monetary policy and they circumvents capital flow management measures exasperate fiscal risks and divert resources from financing the real economy because right now is one of the best times to be buying cryptocurrency, I'm going to be giving you guys an amazing promotional offer here from Margex, where if you guys just trade on their exchange, you'll get access to thousands of dollars in bonus funds and be able to make a lot more money on all of your trades. Also, if you use my referral code, you go to the referral section and you enter in Levi20, you will get massive discounts on all of your trades as well. And to open trades, it's very simple. If you want to buy XRP, for example, you simply go to the trading section. After you open up an account, you then choose the amount of leverage you would like to use. You s put in the amount that you'd like to trade with. And from there, you simply press buy market and there you have it it's that simple make sure to sign up using my link in the description down below let's get back to the video but if you're in venezuela and your government is printing all of this money and completely devaluing your currency they're not looking out for your best interest so why should you consider to trade and use their currency which they completely devalue and print in the trillions well the answer to that question is you absolutely should not but they completely dodge and divert away from this discussion and they use all of these talking 
points and all these fancy words because they're relying on the fact that most people know nothing about cryptocurrency. So what these people are trying to do is they're trying to pass legislation and laws and put them in place before people really understand cryptocurrency so that people can no longer circumvent their corrupt monetary system and get into cryptocurrency instead because of course it serves them much better. I mean, just think about it. Think about you had a hundred thousand dollars in your savings account today and then the next day it is worth one dollar okay this is what happened to many people in venezuela and many people in zimbabwe and the imf completely ignores this fact and instead they say you know what we want these countries to stay destabilized we want these countries to stay in poverty so we're going to try and build a system to stop these people from escaping this corrupt system and if you were ever in doubt about who the IMF actually serves, well, it becomes very clear when we read this right here. They say, A shift from foreign exchange deposits to foreign exchange denominated stablecoins often creates capital outflows from the local banks in emerging economies to the reserve assets managed by the custodian in advanced economies. Such outflows could potentially trigger higher volatility of the local currency and exert pressure on macroeconomic growth. So they're essentially try to say that cryptocurrency is the reason that people are experiencing these extreme levels of volatility. But I'll remind you guys, people in Venezuela didn't even know about Bitcoin when their currency got completely tanked. Same thing with the Zimbabwe officials as well. They had no idea what cryptocurrency even was. They're just starting to just figure out and you know learn about it now. But all of these years ago, they had no idea it even existed. So it's really strange that the IMF is now trying to blame cryptocurrency for destabilizing these economies. It's the pot calling the kettle black. The reason why these currencies are being devalued is not because people are starting to buy crypto instead of their local economy, it's because these banks in these countries are printing absurd amounts of money completely devaluing the currency. I mean, just look at what happened in the United States of America. There was 80% of the circulating dollars that are existing today were printed in the last four years, okay? Now, if we look at that and we look at how much inflation that caused the United States of America, it was atrocious. Your groceries quite literally cost almost double of what they did four years ago. That is absolutely insane. In fact, egg prices quite literally have doubled. You can look it up for yourself. But these institutions, which are threatened by cryptocurrency, are now saying we need regulation because crypto is actually the problem. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. And I want to make something very clear. If you think that the IMF does not have a lot of influence, think again. You can see they just made this announcement. The IMF is very pleased to deepen cooperation with the FSB, as well as with other standard setting bodies and regulatory authorities around the world. So this should really scare all of you. The IMF here is going to be responsible for passing legislation when they're saying that cryptocurrency is a threat. Now, this goes against absolutely everything that crypto stands for. Crypto is an escape from the corrupted monetary system which we have no control over. Cryptocurrency is a monetary system that we actually have a say on how the future looks. We have blockchains, we have DeFi protocols, we can vote on changes, we can ensure that there is a set limited supply or a set minting rate so we know exactly how inflationary our product is going to be. But of course, this takes away power from the governments, this takes the power away from the banks, this takes power away from the elites who have been oppressing you for the last 100 years with the centralized banking institutions that they run around the world. So they don't want this to be a reality. They want to close it down. They want to regulate it. They want to make it harder for people to buy cryptocurrency because, of course, it gives you guys an escape for the first time in your life ever. And that is scary to them, right? So this is what we need to do. We need to raise awareness and ensure that they do not get their way. Because if they do, it's going to be horrible for all of us. So here's the thing with all of this. The IMF and the G20 and the Financial Stability Board, they all work together. Now, the one thing that was just recently released from the FSB is a 2025 cryptocurrency roadmap. And while it does have many pages and it has tons of details on here and they talk about literally everything, they talk about macroeconomic stability, financial stability implications and regulatory issues, all of this to do with cryptocurrency, there are a couple 
couple of incredibly po important points I need to address right away. Number one is they are working directly with BlackRock on the tokenization of all funds. Now, depending on who you are, you might think this is bullish, you might think this is bearish, you might be scared of this, you might be excited about this. But here's what we need to know. BlackRock, they want to maintain a complete financial dominance over every single market, and that does include cryptocurrency. And they're going to use these governing bodies that have a massive influence over governments in literally 190 countries, as discussed earlier, in order to make this a reality. Now, if you don't know much about BlackRock, well, right now, they're buying a lot of land in Ukraine during the Russia-Ukraine war. A little bit strange, isn't that? Well, they're also doing the same thing in Israel and Palestine. What they do is they essentially help start and create and fund wars, and then they buy land at a massive discount when things are going on. That's just what they do in the real estate sector. What they're willing to do to the cryptocurrency industry if they're willing to start a war just to get a good deal on property right? This is the, who we're up against, and this is who we should not be trusting. If we give BlackRock a controlling position in Bitcoin, in XRP, in Ethereum, through the ETFs, they absolutely are going to continue to pass laws and regulation that make our lives worse over the long term, but they're going to dress it up and make it look nice and use all of this terminology that most people don't understand so that these laws get passed through. But we must start fighting against this corrupt system because they've made it very clear that they're going to try and take us out from the inside. Now, if you agree with this message, it's absolutely crucial. You hit that like button and you subscribe to this channel to join us on that journey because I'm going to talk about how we're going to do that and I'm going to continue raising awareness about these issues. Also, join into my Discord community and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.